What is up, people of YouTube? Hey, it's been a while, but it's Joey Anderson here at Wandering Hermits, and we're finally getting back into another video for the point-and-click adventure game. Um, there should be previous videos that you can go check out. Um, I think there's five that we have uploaded um, at the moment, um, kind of walking through how to build a point-and-click game within Unreal 4 using the point-and-click adventure um, pack that we picked up, which I talked about in the previous videos. Um, before we continue, be sure and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get all the notifications for upcoming content. Got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Um, we've got the point and click adventure game, we've got the tabletop, we've got the books, there's uh, stuff going on on Sunday nights at Twitch with a d and campaign, and then now we're switching and rolling into our own tabletop campaign from the Weave in the Void. So yeah, lots of cool stuff coming up. Um, I figured I'd shoot a quick video today. We're going to be looking at the next part of what we're doing. Um, so if you've watched the live streams or didn't get a chance to watch the live streams, you can check them out on YouTube. You can see that we've expanded, finished out the village here, kind of. Um, it's, I mean, it's basically done. i got to add some roofs and stuff like that. But um, the next part that we're doing is going through and adding scene description type stuff. Um, so uh, we had a meeting, Tim and I, last Tuesday, and we fleshed out what is going to be another 13 scenes in the outdoor of Marin's Rest here. And what we did is we, we, we took each scene and we're like, okay, in this scene there's going to be, for starters, you know, there's going to be a shed, we've got the sheriff's house, you know, we've got all this stuff that we need to add stuff to. So right now, you know, um, we can go from this scene, which this is all one scene, it's one zone. Um, I'm breaking them up. Each camera angle is what I'm calling a scene, um, just to, so that you understand what I'm talking about. So if you play the demo, or if you've seen videos of the demo, that deals with these four buildings here. You've got the Blacksmith's Forge, Tavern, Bookstore, and the General Store, and then the outdoor scene here. Um, then you go on to the sheriff's house, which is where we're at now. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at, um, right now you see this placeholder shed here. Okay, well, we're actually going to bring this to life and give it a description. Um, we're going to be dealing with some dialogue, um, adding dialogue to this and everything. So yeah, let's see if we can't get this going. So if you watched previous videos, I've already shown you how to turn um, a prefabbed building into a static mesh. So that's the first key. So we already have this as a static mesh itself. Um, that's how we have it sitting there. So, and forgive the unorganized chaos that is my thinking, but this is how I do things. So that's what we have to deal with. The first thing we need to do is we need to create, now remember we're using this toolkit. So we need to go into wherever you want your items to be. So like I have an items folder. So this is where all of my items are that are interactable objects. And the easiest way to do this is you're gonna go to new blueprint class. You're gonna come down here to interactable object base. We're gonna click that, I'm gonna click select. Now rename this. So this is going to be the sheriff's shed. Boom, okay. Now, we have that. So all it is right now is the little bubble. Now we need to give it some stuff here. So we're gonna open it up. I'm gonna drag this over here so you guys can see it. We need to add a static mesh component. And we need to, just for simplicity, add a box for collision. Um, now with the box selected, scroll down over here and we want it to block all. We can go up here, find your static mesh. Now remember, we're going for the shed, which we've already turned into a static mesh. See previous videos if you don't remember how to do that. Um, and there you go. Now what we need to do is we need to make this box roughly the same size. So this will be like the collision when the pointer is over it. That'll be what it hits, and that's what tells it to act. So let's go ahead and let's try eight. 
And that looks pretty good. I mean, we could make it a little bigger if we want. Uh, but for now, that will probably work just fine. Okay, now we need to compile that. Save. And we can close this. Now if you look, there you go. There's our new sheriff's shed. So now what we can do is we can literally come over here, delete that, and we'll just slide this right back into place. There's actually an easier way to do this, but whatever. We'll do it this way. We'll get it close. We could have just right-clicked it and put, clicked uh, in fact, let's see if I can't remember how to do that. Okay, so this we can right click and boom. So if you saw what I did there, I, I right clicked and you can replace it with the new asset. So now the shed that we had as a placeholder now has a box around it and we have all the cool stuff over here. So now what we can do so we can go over here and we can actually give it a name. So we can call it a storage shed. Boom. Now, like I said, we have some dialogue. Um, I'm not going to share that with you. I mean, I will here in a second. Um, but I'm not going to share the document because uh, it's, we don't, we don't want to have any spoilers more than we need to. But my brother Tim is the one that handles all the writing. And he's actually already banged out all of the descriptions for what we're working on here. So what I'm going to do is show you how to add. Um, so right now with the global interaction component, we did the display name. So when we hover over this with our clicker, it's the tooltip will pop up as storage shed. So it'll show you the name. What we want to do is be able to click on it and inspect this uh, because we have a description text that goes with it. So what we need to do is add dialogue. Um, the manual for the point and click, uh, draw a blank. Why am I drawing a blank? The, the toolkit, there we go. That's the word I was looking for. Tells you how to create tables. Um, so you will first need to, um, go through and create. So like I have, I call it the talking text. I have two different tables. So I have NPC dialogue and inspection dialogue. So these are the tables you'll need to make. So it's, as you can tell, it's a data table. And the way that dialogue works in this game, and I can't remember if I covered this in previous videos or not, but um, we're going to be talking about it right now. So I'll just go over it real quick. Um, you use, whoa, we don't want to select all that. Go away. The scene manager is what handles well everything within your scene. So that's how it's set up. So you can add, so as you can tell here, I have inspection dialogue, NPC dialogue, and then items. Those are my tables. Um, so when you add a um, scene manager to your scene, that is what handles everything. And so make sure that when you create a new table, that you add those tables to your scene manager. Why is it not opening? Um, drawing a blank for a second for some reason. Why am I drawing a blank? Whatever. Um, yeah, so there's a in in the blueprint view, that's where you add your tables, um, and, and the tables are what handles the dialogue and then items and everything like that, which we'll get into items later. Right now we're talking about dialogue. So create your dialogue table, and you can see in the demo that comes with the tool to, uh, toolkit, um, you know you can play around with that and see how the tables work and all that good stuff. Okay, back to the table. So you have your table. We're dealing with inspection dialogue. So this is what your table is going to look like when you open it. Um, as you can tell, we've got lots of stuff in here already. Don't let it overwhelm you. It's not that complicated once you get the hang of it. So we're going to be creating an inspection dialogue for this shed. So we're just going to add a new row. We're going to rename this. We're going to call it Sheriff 
whoops, shed, sheriff shed. Boom, that's all you gotta do. Ah, then what we can do is come down to sequence, add, we don't want any display conditions, the spoken text is going to be. Now this is where I'm literally just gonna come over here and copy what is already written and paste it in there. So you write whatever you want to be written in there. Um, visuals, I have already, so for our inspections, we have this cool little eyeball because I like to use a, uh, well, hang on one second. I'll get to that. Visual settings, character image, paste. Shed. Uh, we don't want any animations, so this is where if you have animations for, which we do, but their animations are really rough right now. So for all intents and purposes right now, we're just going to click none because we don't want any. Um, here's how long the uh, text will stay. If you don't want it to go, if you want it to stay until you click, you're going to do minus one. And then you can choose here, floating dialogue or dialog box. We're using dialog boxes most of the time. Here you can do audio if you want. That's up to you. On completion, on this particular sequence, we're not doing anything. So that should be all we need for just a simple um, inspection text. So click save. So that's on your table, inspection dialog. Now what we gotta do is go back to this in our items that we created, the sheriff shed, the interactable object. We're gonna open that blueprint back up, which is here. Come over here to functions, override, and then on inspection, start dialog sequence. Plug that in there, plug that in there. Uh, dialog row name, so this that data table that we created, Gonna come in here and remember remember we called it Sheriff Shed, I believe. Pile save. Close. Now if we're lucky, if we did everything right, let's check this out. So, looks like it's there. Hover over it. Oh, there's one thing we forgot to do, and I will show you. So you see how it has a gear icon? When we click this, it's going to give us multiple options. Oh, yes. I know exactly what we forgot to do. Yep. Okay, on this shed, the interactable object, go down here. See that it says disabled interactions. We cannot inspect it right now. If you saw the gear icon, it was telling us we could use it. We don't want to be able to use it. Um, you could, you can expand these. You can have all of these be um, disabled interactions. But for now, we just don't want. We don't want to be able to use it. We just want to be able to inspect it. So let's try that one more time here. We'll run to the next scene. Boom. Okay, so there's your tool tip for storage shed. As you can tell, um, that was where we gave it the name. Now you see the uh, spyglass emblem. We click on it, boom, it pulls up your inspection text. Small shed where the sheriff stores extra supplies. At least you assume it's for supplies. It could be a portal to the underworld. And as you can tell, it's still up. And as soon as I click, it goes away. All right, folks, that's it for today. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave uh, your questions in the comments and we'll try to get those answered. And yeah, look forward to uh, the next uh, episode that we do. We'll see y'all later.